please welcome Reverend Robert Jones, Jr. Thanks so much. Got to find my gizmo here. Where's my gizmo? Thank you so much. You know, a lot of guys, they go unplugged. I never plugged in. So, it's good, and, and, and it's good to know that I'm Paprika. You know, I was, I was wondering who I, what I was going to be. I, uh, there you go. Yeah. So, you know, the reason you play the guitar is not because the guitar is a great American folk instrument. Not because it is expressive and can play chords and single lines. It's because it gets you girls. <laughs> when I was a kid, I did not have a guitar, right? So I would meet girls. People would set me up. I remember particularly a young lady by the name of Priscilla. And everybody said, you should meet my cousin Priscilla. And I thought, okay. And then when I finally got to meet Priscilla, it was like, hi, Priscilla. Hi, Robert. Bye, Priscilla. Bye, Robert. It was not working. I knew I needed help. I found that help on the back of a Greyhound bus. There was a kid, and he was playing a guitar. He was about 14 years old, but he was playing a guitar. And they were surrounded by women, or girls anyway. And his name was Billy. And Billy was playing. I keep a close watch on his heart of mine. And I don't let no worries cross my mind. And the, the fact that Billy's voice was changing was immaterial. He had a guitar. And then all the girls went, oh, Billy. And I thought if I could get a guitar, they'd go, oh, Robert. So I went to my grandmother. And my grandmother was always a woman who had my back. And I said, Grandma, can you help me get a guitar? She said, how much money you got? I said, I got about $50 saved up. She said, well, I got about $50 I can let you have. Now, when we go down to that pawn shop tomorrow, don't act no fool. I thought, what does that mean? If you see something you like, don't act like you like it. Don't be pointing, don't be embarrassing me. And I'm like, okay. So we went down to Zeedman's Loans. In Detroit, that is the home. That is the chief pawn shop. One of the oldest pawn shops in Detroit. It's got everything you need. Power tools, furs, shotguns. Watches, rings. In fact, they got Rolexes, one L or two. Whatever you need. And they had guitars, and I looked up, and I saw the most beautiful guitar I'd ever laid my eyes on. It was a Madeira. Madeira. All that was good in guitars and soft Corinthian leather. I knew I had to have it. And the man who ran the pawn shop said, well, lady, does your grandson see something he likes? She said, I don't know. I, he seemed to like, and I almost raised my hand and said, put your hand down. He seemed to like that ugly guitar over there. That my diera. I said, lady, that's a Madeira. That's the finest guitar we got in the place. In fact, that guitar, it normally goes for $325, but for you today, I'd give it to you for $250. And I would prepare myself to be discouraged, to be disappointed. But I did not understand the power of a grandmother. Inside every grandmother's purse, there is another purse, a little purse. Sometimes it's closed with a clasp, and sometimes it's just a handkerchief with a bunch of bills in it. And my grandmother went inside her secret grandma purse. Since she was holding the money, and she began to count, she said, let me see, 20, 30, 35, 40, 
41, 42, 43, 43, 25, 43, 50, 43, 75. Oh, Lord, you done made me lose count. 20, 10, 30. And by the time she got to 82, he couldn't take it. He said, lady, just take the guitar and go. Just get out. I had a Madeira. Yes but I didn't know what to do with it. In fact, I didn't even know how to tune it. So I went down to Hudson's downtown Detroit, big old department store in their basement. They had the bookstore and I got the Mel Bay big note song book with the optional floppy tuning record. And I put it on my grandmother's Magnavox and I started to tune that thing up. I said, look out, Billy, because you're mine, mine. Because you're wasn't gonna get no women like that. I had to go back to the Mel Bay Big Note song book and I found out if you're a guitar player, what you need is chords. So I found my first great chord. The first chord I ran into was an A minor. And the next chord I ran into was an E7. And with those two chords, I learned my first great song. Well, sit right back and you hear the tale, the tale of a fateful trip. That started on this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. Yeah, y'all can laugh, but that was my song, and I could throw down on it at a moment's notice, play it with endless variations. But I noticed something. I still wouldn't get no women. In fact, it was having the opposite effect. Women were starting to run away from me. That's when I knew I had to go back to the Mel Bay Big Note songbook, and I learned two more chords. I learned the E, and I learned the A. And I found that if you did it right, you could do this. That was the blues. Armed with those two chords, I figured I was pretty much ready for a professional career, if you know what I mean. I got myself a gig at a place called the Soup Kitchen Saloon, where the chili was called Capital Punishment. It was great, but I noticed no matter how much I played my acoustic guitar, Nobody wanted to hear the acoustic guitar. People would say things like, play some B.B. King. I'd say, uh, I do not play no B.B. King. Fact was, I could not play no B.B. King. B.B. King was the king of the blues. And no matter who you listen to, it's hard to beat the king. B.B. King was the nicest man. I got a chance to meet him later on in my career, but B.B. King had his limitations. But I came to the point where I started to resent B.B. People say, hey man, play some B.B. I say, I do not play no B.B. King. Play some B.B., man. I say, you put some strings on him and tune him up, I'll play the heck out of him. I was wrong, but I was hostile. Until one night, a beautiful woman came in the room. She was about five foot two and 182 pounds of something good. Two pounds of woman in a one pound bag. She eased over to the mic. She said, hey, baby, I showed you like the way you play. I said, thanks, baby. And then I got ready. She said, would you play me some uh, Lightning Hopkins? Well, I don't want no woman. Lord, ain't got no hair, no long in my eye. Well, you know that woman always wearing a good man. Yeah, buy me a wig all the time. She said, ooh, baby, I like that. Say, do you play any Howlin' Wolf? I said, I asked her for water. Hey, you know that woman brought me gasoline. Ain't that the turbis woman? Yeah, that you ever see. She said, ooh, baby, I like that. Ooh. She said, don't tell nobody, but you know who I love? I said, who you love, baby? She said, I love me some Willie Nelson. <laughs> Did I tell you she was fine? I said, 
Maybe I didn't love you quite as often as I could have. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. I was reeling that woman in, man, I tell you. She said, you about the finest hunk of ham fat I ever saw. Say, baby, you can take me home just as soon as you play me some B.B. King. And for the first time in my life, I wanted to play B.B. King, even though I did not know how. So I'm a man, you know what I did? I faked it. I was like, the thrill is gone. Well, the thrill is gone away. Well, the thrill is gone. The thrill is gone away. And I looked up, she was going away. And when you get desperate, you know what you got to do? You got to go back to your roots. And I mean, I went to my roots and the Lord blessed me. I went all the way back. I said, baby, she said, what? I said, before you leave, what? She said, well, the thrill is gone, babe. Thrill is gone away. Sit right back and you hear the tale, tale of a faithful trip. Well, the thrill is gone. Thrill is gone away. Seven stranded castaways here on Gilligan's Isle. Well, you done me wrong. You'll be sorry someday. I looked up and she was gone away, but it was okay. I learned two valuable things that night. The first was that Gilligan's Island and, and the thrill is gone basically got the same chord changes. But I learned something else too, and I'm gonna leave this with you. When you begin to doubt yourself, just remember Robert Jones told you this. Well, I'm free now. God knows you know I'm free. Well, you know I'm free now. God knows you know I'm free. You know I could not play like B.B. King. But then again, he could not play like me.